What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Nasha. Welcome back to the channel. And this entire week, before I get with, before I move on with today's video, this entire week is going to be a week full of news, including, including um, a video, a video that I think I'm gonna make into, I think on Friday. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I think from today, at the time of, at the time of this being recorded and posted, all the way up until this coming Sunday. I believe there's going to be a lot of news to to talk about, including um, including today's video, which will be my thoughts on the unexpected heel turns of Dakota Kai and Seth Rollins. Yeah, you heard me right, Seth Rollins. But before I get to that, I actually want to talk about something that Leon Hart had posted just just earlier today, um, in, which actually involves the whole. You know, if, if involving the BS with the COPA, the Child Act BS, and the FTC. Um, again, I'm going. I'm again. I've said it. I said it before. I'll say it again. My channel is not intended for kids, and and I and I know this. I know this because because I checked um, checked the analytics on my on my YouTube studio of sorts. And I and I already know, I already know that the majority that literally, literally one that that uh, literally every that all of my viewers, all of my subscribers that watch my videos are male. That's one. That's the one thing that I do want to point out. An another thing that that that, uh, that I want to point out is that this channel is for people is literally is for people who are over thirteen. Like like I say around. 15, maybe 16, somewhere in there, so like, so like between, so I, I would say like between 17 and over. So that's another thing that I, that I want to point out, but, but no matter what the future holds for YouTube and for, for this channel, I can guarantee you I will be making, I will try to make the best content that I can possibly, do, that I can possibly deliver. And it's like I said, if we can get this channel to, to a hundred subs, I know it's not much. But 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 when, but when this channel goes goes to gets to 100 subscribers, I will be opening up this this booster box on the channel. It is an it is an unlimited box, uh, sealed box of the Shining Darkness. I actually got this off of Amazon, should be told, for really cheap. But yeah, but yes, uh, but yes, at least uh, at least 100 subscribers, this box will be opened. But with that, but. But with that being said, there is a lot of news that I will be discussing over the course of the week, including including the future of NXT, um, uh, a brand new product that is going to that is going to seal the deal for the 2019-2020 Yu-Gi-Oh season, as well as um, as well as um, as well as some new updates involving involving two structure acts that have been announced. So here is one of those videos. So again, my thoughts on Dakota Kai and Seth Rollins turning heel, starting with with Dakota Kai. Now, if you guys know, um, if you guys know, um, if you guys remember, a f several several weeks ago on NXT, Rhea Ripley um, had announced her team for War Games. And she and, and she and she chose. She chose Tegan Knox and Candice LeRae. And then when and when and then when Mia Yim came out and helped Rhea Ripley's team, Ripley had chose Mia Yim. And that and true and in my opinion, I think that sparked something in. Ooh, excuse me. Um, I think I think that might have sparked something inside of Dakota Kai that was like, why, why her of all people, and so um, and so um, and so that kind of that that just sparked some something in her, and I think that's that that's the cause that that was the cause of Dakota Kai turning heel because. Dur because during because during the NXT Takeover War Games pre-show, which we did have a match for 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 the pre-show, which was completely weird, which was weird, which I which was Angel which was Angel Garza versus Isaiah Swerve Scott. 
um, we found out that Mia Yim was take was taken out was attacked was was attacked from from behind, and no one know you know no one knew who who did it, but Dakota Kai just showed showed up from out of nowhere from out of nowhere, and Rhea Ripley said you know what you're in, because we found out during the pre show that 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 the women's war games match was going to be kicking off the show. And as I and as I told you guys before, you know, you know, in my review video, which you guys could check out, with two women, only two women, Tegan Knox being taken out by by Dakota Kai, and with Dakota Kai just eliminating her, just removing herself from the match, Rhea Ripley and Candice LeRae were the only two on Team Ripley. With two women, Team Ripley won. The odds were, were against them, but they pulled it off. As to how, I have no idea. But I believe that it was Dakota Kai who attacked Mia Yim from behind out of jealousy. Out of jealousy and hatred over the fact that it was that Rhea Ripley chose Mia Yim instead of her. So my thoughts on it, I was not expecting it. I was not expecting Dakota Kai to turn heel. Um, honestly, though, I wasn't expecting her to turn heel at all because she had captured the hearts of the entire WWE Universe. When she was a part of the first ever Minion Classic in twenty seven in back in twenty seventeen, and um, yeah, that was just completely completely unexpected. But I will, but I, but I, but I will say though, I think what made me think that Dakota Kai be, you know, was a heel was the gear that 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 she was wearing. It was all dark colors, you know, like like right around like the. Top, like some, like around the top, the stripe on the top, you know, and on her and and her bottoms, there was a bit of there, there, there was like a bit of a bit of a rainbow color, but she was also wearing, um, she had black she had black tape, black tape around her, and I think that was one of the main things that caught my eyes. Like, wait a minute, uh, I, I was like, wait a minute, is she is, is she gonna do what I think she's gonna do? And she was the third. She was um, she was gonna be the third woman to enter to enter War Games for Team Ripley. Attacked her from just from out of nowhere and completely and almost tore tore Tegan Knox's knee. Um, but based on on the tweets that Tegan Knox has posted, uh, she said that she is perfectly healthy. Um, you know her her knee's okay. You know she just needs to to. To rest it and she'll be okay, but apparently, but she wants answers. And from the rumors that I've been hearing over the last few days, we could be getting those answers tonight on NXT at the time at the time of this being recorded and posted, which will be on the same day. And at the time of recording, it is currently two thirteen p.m. So, um, so again, we could we could get we could get get those answers. But if I but if I know but if I know Rhea Ripley because I've seen every single every single one of of Rhea Ripley's matches from her days in the in in both Mae Young Classics as well as being a part of NXT UK over the course of the last year and of course and now being on NXT being a part of Raw and SmackDown and now you know and now just this past Sunday Survivor Series knowing her. She she will force force the answers out of Dakota Kai. I know that for a fact. Um, but I will say though, it's but it's like I said, seeing Dakota Kai as a heel, I didn't. It's just I don't I don't think it's gonna last very long. Um, give it about a few months. She might be she might become a full. She might you know you know it might work out, but only time will tell. But again. That was completely unexpected. Now for Seth Rollins. So, um, so the seeds of Seth Rollins becoming a heel kind of kind of were planted back at Hell in a Cell, which let me see, let me check out my book here, which was actually just a couple months ago. It was actually just last month, actually. Uh, yeah. So, so if you guys remember, um, the match was actually. The match was um, had ended had ended in a in a no contest because Seth Rollins 
stacked, stacked, la uh, you know, ladders, chairs, a toolbox on top of Bray, uh, on top of the fiend, and took a sledgehammer and hit the fiend with it, forcing the referee to end the match. Now, now I want to point out the point out one thing: hell in a cell, no rules. There's only one rule: pinfall or submission. That's that's it. You either win by pinfall or you win by submission. You can't end the match. That's why I have no clue. But, but with that, but, but with that being said, um, the seeds were planted. I think, in, in my opinion, opinion, I think the seeds were planted by, by, by the fiend. Because if you guys remember, it was the fiend that forced Seth Rollins to to do things you never thought possible, and. But and and um, I mean do I mean don't get me wrong. I mean there were some there were some venues that liked you know that liked Seth Rollins, but there were quite a few venues that they that Raw went to that did not like Seth Rollins. But um, but truth be told, um, Crown Jewel. I think Crown Jewel. Guys, I am so sorry. That was my grandparents' dog. She she will not shut up. She will not shut up. <laughs> um, that and my and my uncle's here, so boo. Um, anyway, um, Crown Jewel was I think where it started, where everything was starting to fall fall into place, because Seth Rollins lost lost to the Fiend, and the Fiend became the new became Universal Champion and took the title to SmackDown because Bray because Bray Wyatt was was exclusive to SmackDown as part of the 2019 draft um and um and everything just went downhill for Seth um and so and so this past Monday on Raw I think he became I think this past Monday on Raw he 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 became a full flush heel I was not expecting it um because 2019 was an 2019 I think 2019 was his best year yet winning you know for Seth to win the men's the men's Royal Rumble match kicking off WrestleMania and defeating Brock Lesnar to become to become Universal Champion uh, defeating Baron Corbin as well to retain the title um, and and then of course and then of course regaining the title from Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. He's had one hell, one hell of a year, but I think it came to an end this past Sunday at Survivor Series, when when he got eliminated by Keith Lee. Literally, he got eliminated by Keith Lee uh, at at Survivor Series, and um, you know, and he told, and he had, he had, he he had a town hall meeting, and he told the entire Raw roster, "You sucked." You know, you know they, you know that they were the ones that dropped the ball, and you know he wants to fix it. The way the way I see it, and do not get me wrong, I I will I don't I know I know that he's a heel, but I'm gonna I will still be a Seth Rollins fan no matter what, and I know that that my brother will probably be will probably feel the same way. But then again, knowing him, knowing him, his mind is divided, <laughs> kind of. Kind of like mine. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, um, so, um, the way I see it, I feel like, I think he was the one that, that dropped the ball. Because Triple H had offered Seth Rollins to go, you know, you know, to go back to NXT like he did with Finn Balor. You know, you know, he tried to do that, do that with, with, with Kevin Owens. And Drew McIntyre, he even and, and as I said, he tried it on on Seth Rollins. It didn't work. So the way I see it, um, the the way I see it, I feel I think Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins was the one that dropped the ball because, um, he was the one that led that led the Raw men's team to battle. As for Charlotte, she. You know, you know, and she, you know, with Charlotte Flair, she led the the Raw women's team to battle, and Seth was roasting everybody. 
He he was roasting Charlotte Flair, Rey Mysterio, including Ray's son Dominic, um, uh, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, um, and even also the and and even also the authors of Pain, AOP. You know, just saying that that they all sucked. The way I see it, the the way I see it, the only ones that that became Raw's MVPs were the Viking Raiders. They were the only ones that actually won a match at Survivor Series. In fact, they were a part they, they were a part of the kickoff show defeating both the New Day and 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 Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish of the Undisputed Era, pinning both defeating both of them because you know because of the fact that they you know because they know that they are the superior tag team champions, you know and not, you know, and not the New Day, not the Undisputed Era. So, again, I think Seth Rollins was the one that dropped the ball. And I think he, and I think he became a, a complete, I think his, his heel turn was complete. When, when the match ended, this past, this past Monday on Raw, when the, when the, when AOP attacked Owens, Owens to stop the match, and Seth Rollins had stomped, had hit a stomp on Owens twice. I think that was where he became a full flesh heel. My thoughts on it, I think um I wasn't again, I think I, I think that was pretty well expected. But at the same time, I think uh I think he I, I think he should have became I think he, he should have remained a babyface at least at least until next year's uh, at least until until next year's WrestleMania, and then turn heel. So I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. But um. But but there were rumors that I've been hearing for the last couple of days that they were gonna do the same thing. Same thing to Becky Lynch, because as you guys know, Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins are engaged. Um, that's not gonna happen. My opinion. I know it's not gonna happen because because even even if WWE tried to turn Becky Lynch heel. Like they did the first time, the fans are just gonna, you know, you know, the fans are are, are gonna cheer, cheer for it, and they're and she'll end up becoming a babyface again. So there's so in so with Becky Lynch, there's no point, no point in, in. There's no there's no point. Besides, she's all she's way over with the fans. Like ten times, she is right now. She is ten times over with the fans, than Ronda Rousey was when she was Raw 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 Women's Champion. So. But but those are just my thoughts on it. Um, again, so with Dakota Kai, I was not 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 expecting that turn heel. But with Rollins, pretty well ex pretty well expected. At the same time, I don't know. I think again the only MVPs on Raw are the Viking Raiders because they were the ones that actually won a match. But. Um, but you know what? Uh, but you know what? Um, but you know what? You just gotta pick up, pick up the pieces, brush yourself off, and move on. That's just, that's just the way I see it. You know, Seth Rollins has been known to hold grudges for a good period of time, and after a while, they just he just let it go. But with that being said, that is gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the thumbs up button. And if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you guys don't miss out on any new content that comes your way, including including what I have in store this week. I've got some oh my god. There's gonna there are so many so much news that I want that I want to to discuss with you guys because literally the literally this literally this past month has been nothing but news. Um so I so I'm super excited. Um and of course too you guys can follow me and also too be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram links to all my accounts will be in the description below. Um, so follow me there. And on that, this is your boy Nash signing out.